Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over rotational kinetic energy. So let's get started. Now, you might already be thinking, I know what kinetic energy is, but you've maybe not seen rotational kinetic energy before. And just like we've said for a lot of the other stuff in this topic, there is actually an angular or rotational form of kinetic energy, which we call rotational kinetic energy. So we're still considering objects moving in a circle or rotating. And it says here that when torque does work in a body to make it rotate, it gains kinetic energy. So when you apply an unbalanced torque to an object, it will make it gain kinetic energy because it starts moving. Now the kinetic energy of a rotating body can be calculated using this formula here. So it's EK rot, so I've just put the rot there, you could write rotational if you want to, just to make it look different from the classic EK equals a half mv squared, and this equals a half times i times omega squared. Now notice the similarity to EK equals a half mv squared, the equation for kinetic energy in linear motion. This takes a very similar form, where you've got rotational kinetic energy is equal to a half times the moment of an of the object times the angular velocity of the object squared. So EK rot is rotational kinetic energy measured in joules, I is moment of inertia measured in kilograms meters squared, and omega is angular velocity measured in radians per second. So this equation is on the relationship sheet in the exam. Now to put this into context in an example, we're going to look at the specific case for an object rolling down a slope. So it says here that when an object such as a sphere or cylinder is allowed to roll down a slope, the gravitational potential energy at the top, which is given by EP equals mgh, will be converted to both translational linear kinetic energy, EK equals a half mv squared, and rotational kinetic energy, which we've just seen as EK rot equals a half i omega squared. Now this is probably a new word for you, translational, but it basically just means linear. It means that motion in the straight line. So if we think about this sphere or cylinder rolling down the slope here, it's going to be moving with a linear velocity v, making it go straight on, and it's also going to have an angular velocity which makes it roll and rotate. So it's got to have both of these, which means it's got both a linear kinetic energy and a rotational kinetic energy. So the translational just refers to the linear part, and rotational refers to the angular part. So in this example, it says by conservation of energy and assuming no losses due to friction, so assuming no energy losses due to heat and sound and so on, then we're saying that the gravitational potential energy of this object to begin with is going to be transformed into both the linear kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy. So we can say that EP equals EK translational plus EK rotational. And if we wanted to replace those expressions with the actual equations, then we've got MGH equals a half mv squared plus a half i omega squared. And you might see a question asking you to calculate, say, the linear speed at the bottom of the slope, or say, the angular speed of the object at the bottom of the slope, depending on which information you're given in the question. So when you're doing a problem like this, it might be useful to remember that V equals R omega, because that is your link between linear and angular velocity. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.